Energy efficiency is using energy more wisely. It's not about suffering. It's not about taking cold showers and drinking warm beer. It's about obtaining the same level of services, but using less energy while doing that. Simply put, energy efficiency is the fastest, cheapest, and cleanest source of energy available to us. And because it's so fast, so, so cheap, there's so much of it, we're able to uh, reduce the cost of energy consumption. And that translates into economic benefits, including job creation. If you remove the most costly energy generators, for instance, from a power system, then energy rates can re be reduced, energy bills can be reduced, households have more money to stimulate uh, consumption in the general economy, which traditionally means local jobs, compared to buying power from power plants that are often run from imported sources of fuel, uh, such as natural gas and oil, and uh, re removing our dependence on coal. So it's all a win-win solution. The U.S. has decoupled economic growth from energy consumption. And one of the ways it's done this is through very rigorous uh, appliance standards and building codes. We've taken a regulatory approach. We've outlawed, for instance, incandescent lamps and we're now requiring a high level of efficiency for air conditioning uh, in uh, commercial buildings, very appropriate for the weather today. Um, so I think that that's been exemplary, but I don't want to fool you. We are not um, the best example. For even for codes and standards, I'd like to turn to Japan. They have the Top Runner program, which is a much more nimble regulatory approach. In the U.S., we spend years with announcements of pending standards and codes and allowing for public response, which is good, of course, but it means it takes time and delay. The Japanese, on the other hand, when new technologies are introduced into the marketplace, very quickly thereafter, they become, if they're more efficient, the required uh, minimum performance. So we all know that the sun doesn't always shine, and by the time the early evening comes around, you have everyone at home, peak demand is occurring, and yet the supply from solar is dropping. So a targeted energy efficiency investment to reduce consumption in the early evening hours is, is a way to balance the two together. Now sometimes that means, for instance, considering your water heating consumption. Now, a program might try to um, incentivize the purchase of more efficient water heaters. Or you might have a program that allows a third party to manage your water heating. So when the power grid needs to be supported, you can have that company uh, use relays to cycle your water heater. You don't even know at home that your water heater is no longer um, heating in the peak hour of the afternoon. You still get your hot water, but the uh, electricity consumption from water heating has been eliminated. So they worked well together, solar and efficiency. Yeah, that same uh, combination of efficiency and other renewables work well too. So even with wind, for instance, and um, with a geothermal or really any resource that's intermittent, you can use responsive demand to work through those periods when the supply is, is uh, limited. My key advice for decision makers and policy makers in the UK and elsewhere is before they invest in that next large scale power plant or energy 
facility, they consider if they might be able to manage energy demand through energy efficiency. And second, if they do elect to initiate a new energy efficiency program, that they base it on evidence from strong social economic behavioral research, which is the kind of research done in the UK universities so well.